So, there's no better way to start the year than with new, exciting goals, right? And if you're in the architecture world, there's always that new software in your list that you want to master. So, in today's video, let's talk about what software you have to have in your resume in 2020. Hey guys, Oliver here with a new video. I hope you guys are doing great. If you're new here, I post weekly videos all about architecture, especially visualization and representation, but every so often about extra topics like this one. 2020 has tons of new content planned, so consider subscribing. Alright, first of all, there isn't a magical single software that is going to fulfill all of your architecture needs. The best architect has a handful of skills to tackle each problem with ease. Now, each software has unique features that can help you achieve better and faster results. So, let's talk about the softwares in groups. Then, all you gotta do is pick one of each group and you will be covered in all aspects. Okay, you guys will probably know a couple of them, but since I've had lots of requests about what software I use and why, I'm going to also give my opinion on each one and in the end you can see precisely what workflow I use. Cool. The first and foremost important group is obviously BIM. It's the main tool for architects, no doubt. Today, it is a must in your skill set. A couple of years back, some would say that this would be a plus in a resume, but it isn't anymore, it's a complete necessity. So, if it's still of today, you don't know a BIM software, it has to be your priority for sure. There are basically three main softwares that I can highlight here. ArchiCAD, which is very intuitive to use, you can go pretty easy from a basic messing to a very detailed 3D model with all the documentation info in there. It is made specifically for architects. Then Revit, which is the most used worldwide. It has the best connections with other projects such as Structural, Map, and so on. And there's one I like to always remember but usually doesn't have that much attention, Vectorworks. From all three, it has the best tools to create the 2D drawings from 3D, although I find the 3D modeling part a bit confusing. Well, that's a very short and shallow comparison. But don't just make this choice based on the most used software worldwide, thinking you just get a job easier, or just based on this list. I've used all of them, and for me personally, Revit is too square. Maybe because I was never really an AutoCAD user, and Revit has a bit of that workflow. And also I feel that the software focus is more towards the civil engineering world. Then looking more into ArchiCAD, I saw that some big companies also decided to use it, I found it very easy to use, to visualize and design exactly what I wanted. The learning curve isn't as steep as Revit. And lastly, I found it very similar to SketchUp's workflow with a push and pull system. So from my experience, learning how a BIM software works is more important than really mastering one of them. It is much easier to migrate from one to another once you understand how BIM works. The main idea of this video is to present you with options so you can search more info to make a well thought decision. I'm going to leave a couple of useful links in the description. Although 2D softwares aren't as needed as BIM, they are a complement to your main architectural workflow. This is also where you'd create preliminary 2D concepts of zoning. Usually Revit users will use AutoCAD to refine details that weren't exported as planned. Revit also has the tools to draw 2D in it. ArchiCAD also has strong tools to help you create patterns, lines and everything needed in 2D. But you might be wondering, what would I need to draw 2D if you said that BIM is already what's being used out there? Well, there are certain areas that, in my experience, still take great value out of quick and precise 2D drawings. One of which is interior design. Documenting furniture and creating specific woodwork details that will go to your local carpenter and joiner, it still makes more sense to do it this way. A BIM software requires so much more modeling to extract plans and sections that a 2D approach can get it done in no time. So AutoCAD is obviously an option, but for me the winner, if you're planning to go strictly 2D, is Vectorworks. Here you work with planes instead of lines and fills, and this is what's best for me in this software. It has a similar workflow to Adobe Illustrator with shapes for example. I used on all architecture offices I worked and during university before jumping into BIM, so I highly recommend taking a look. Alright guys, before we continue, let me give a shout out to this video sponsor, and that allows me to maintain this channel with consistent uploads, Skillshare. 
So, you know Skillshare, right? You've seen me talk about them a couple of times here on the channel, and that's because I really believe in online learning. And also, it seemed the perfect fit for this video, especially because we're talking about learning new things in 2020. So, Skillshare is an online learning community that offers a membership to thousands of classes for creative and curious people, on topics such as illustration, design, photography, freelancing, and more. Their lessons are designed for real life, so you can move your creative journey forward without putting life on hold. Most classes are under 60 minutes with short lessons to fit any schedule. Here you can find classes that teach you the basics of a software, such as the ones in Adobe Suite, but what I find the best out of Skillshare is that teachers share specific subjects that they've mastered. Therefore, they teach you a skill, and the software is just a tool to achieve it. Now, I think a good way to start 2020 is, is reviewing your old habits and building new ones. So I'm currently taking another class from Thomas Frank, but this time on real productivity, how to build habits that last. He shares so many interesting tips on how to achieve long-term habit change. Now, Skillshare is really affordable with an annual subscription being less than 10 bucks a month, so make sure to check him out. Click the link in the video description to get two free months of premium membership and explore your creativity. Thanks a lot Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now back to the video to talk about other groups of software. Next, let's talk about 3D. BIM software is incredible to document and generate construction info and details, but when it comes to visualization, for now at least, simply forget it. Yeah, it has render engines built in, but to be honest, it sucks. Now, there are two types of workflow you can use. I use them both depending on the situation. You can decide to model everything in a BIM software, but this usually requires much more detailing than needed for a visualization. For example, in preliminary studies, when you are selling your idea, it doesn't really matter what type of framing connection your windows will have or the exact slab thickness you need. You're actually designing the space and creating the architecture itself. Of course, you have to have it in your head, but in a broader sense. So it might be interesting to choose a 3D software that helps you move quickly and really get those ideas out of your head. So for that, you have SketchUp, the easiest of all, but limited in its modeling capabilities. Rhino, an incredible tool for modeling, widely used as well, but with a steeper learning curve. And then obviously 3ds Max. In my opinion, this, used with the render engine, will give you the best realistic image. But for designing and visualizing spaces, create walkthroughs and show directly to clients, it's not a good option. And then next, just as pointed out, render engines, V-Ray being the most used, and Corona Render that can be used with 3D Max. Well, there are other options, but I think those two stands out from the rest. And then there's another category of render engines that have become more popular lately, and they are called real-time renderers, such as Lumion, Twin Motion, and Unreal Engine. They require a lot more computer power, but can produce great results in a short time. As the name says, real-time renders. Okay, now, no matter what type of workflow you choose, and if you've been a follower of the channel, you know that for me, post is the most important step in visualization. Now, if you're dealing with renders, you have to master Adobe Photoshop. With it, you can also create 2D and 3D diagrams, as you have seen in the channel. But if you want to go extra and step up your resume, you should also master Adobe Illustrator. And I could go even further and say that it's probably as important as Photoshop. Those two combined have a great potential. Then, to wrap all of the drawings you created, Adobe InDesign is the software to create ports, portfolios, and so on. The way it handles multi-page documents is just perfect. Although, I still find Adobe Illustrator quite better than InDesign when creating single boards or single page documents. But I think it's just a personal preference. Now, I've been working my portfolio these past weeks to apply for Masters, and once it's ready, I'll make sure to share with you guys and make a full dedicated video, so stay tuned. Well, these are the essential software groups, but as an extra, there are other softwares that, depending on which area you're specializing in, can be really useful to learn, and they have definitely helped me out along the way at some point. ArchiGIS being one of it, it's a software that allows you to export urban maps. Usually, your local urban city planning department provides base files that can be opened with ArchiGIS. So this is a really interesting extra to have in your resume, even if you're not going to work with urban design. 
Then Grasshopper, that is sort of a plugin that can be used with Rhino, and I think even connects with ArchiCAD to generate parametric architecture. And finally, which isn't an extra, but an essential tool for architects, Excel. Simply one of the best tools for this profession, being able to create automatic tables of materials, construction areas, and many other things is non-negotiable, a requirement in a resume. And not just the basic, but you must know how to use formulas. Alright guys, so this was an overall look at what I find the most essential softwares in architecture. Obviously, each one of them deserves a deeper explanation, but this video was to talk more broadly about them and introduce to you if you haven't heard of them. Now, if you got interested in any of these softwares, I'm going to link a bunch of useful websites in the video description that you can look more into. Now, my personal workflow consists of ArchiCAD as my Beam software. Then, to create renders, I usually export to SketchUp to add scenes and set up the render engine, which is V-Ray for SketchUp. And then, once my render is ready, I'll jump into Photoshop to post-product the image. This workflow might change in the future, but for now, it has been what I use and what I found to be the fastest and give the best result. Now, as I said, this is my own list based on my experiences, and I know it can vary a lot from location and background. So here's what I'm thinking. I would love to see if we could share our workflow in the comments below. What's your list? If you can, please comment the software you use and the location so we can see what architects are using around the world. Thank you so much for watching. Now, if you enjoyed and stay tuned here, make sure to give this video a like, it helps a lot, and follow me at old.graphics. Okay, as always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!